Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and this is the 28th of August 2015 Genesis Models show. Um, so welcome to the show. Um, this week um, I've been working along with F15 because I'm having a good um, uh, two weeks bash at the F15. Um, for those of you who entered the World War II bomber group build, I have sent off your dog tags. Um, they're on the way to you. I know there's some people from the US and Australia so it might take a fair bit of time to get to you but it will eventually just let me know if you have any problems um this week with the f15 um i've been bashing away with doing the canopy um i know there's a tutorial on the website but there's you know as i kind of uh, progress with my modeling i mean i learn new things um i'm always reading books and research and everything um you know and it's just it's just good to sort of try new things and as i do um you know some some videos kind of get a bit out um sort of outdated so i've um sort of kind of shown you um the canopy again it's still very similar but there's just some slight little changes just making it a little bit better um, as well as we've been messing around with the cockpit uh, and all those kind of things there um, basically everything's getting locked down now uh, ready for some spraying next week um, what's up as well um, got a nice inbox review for you here which is um, I always like these little quick cheap kits where you know let's face it you know you can just quickly bash it together and just get down to the pure love and joy of the hobby and that is going to be um tamia's 135th stewart Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron, and in this video, we're going to be having an inbox review of Tamiya's Stewart 135th scale US light tank M3. Um, now, this is in, as I say, where 135th scale, which is what I prefer. Nice box art here. Uh, this kit is small, but do you know what? It only costs about £11.50 RRP. Um, you know, so it's only a little cost, a little. Um, um, a little tank we've got here now just looking inside first off um, let's take a look at the actual top hole get straight in there down to the the nit and gritty side of this and hopefully as you can see in here you know there is a lot of cool detail going on here it is quite crisp we've got recess panel lines re um, raised um, bolts and everything going on here um, yeah I mean the plastic does feel quite smooth it doesn't look kind of smooth but it does feel um, you know nice and smooth um, yeah it all does look um, you know pretty top notch considering from the research I did and it's a bit hard to believe but apparently this was new tooled in 1976 or something uh, which makes it old but it doesn't look old um, as you can see we've got more, all these bolts going on around the bottom hole section as well okay we've got a bit of a um, a bit of sort of sand there where it's sort of come off the uh, the moulds um, but yeah, I mean, you can't really grumble for the price and, you know, for how old it is. Um, our turret section here, what we've got here, we've got um, some really cool um, weld marks going on, going around there. Hopefully, as you can see, the turret's two halves that you bring together. Um, and then all our other little pieces, you know, the details there. There's a tiny bit of flash, but no no real big deal there. You do get like a commander, um, and he looks rather well detailed, good enough to, to put on your model. Um, working our way around, we've got more sort of detail going on. Um, we've got like, you know, bits of kit to go around. We've got our um, MG gun here as well. That does look, you know, pretty well detailed. Um, you can't really complain. And as for ejector pin marks, I mean, they are on here, but they're not exactly in places where it's going to sort of hinder your your build. I mean, this is a pretty good looking kit, which is going to be um, very adequate for um, the job at hand. And being Tamiya, I mean, it's probably going to go together rather, rather, um, rather well. 
We do um, have some more detail here, which is like road running road wheels, drive uh, drive shafts, and idle wheels, and everything like that. You know, the detail is there very very well. Um, it does look like a very competent kit. Um, and again, we've got some more detail there, as you can see. I do like the detail on this. And being a nice small kit, it's going to be easy to build. Um, we've also got our tracks here. Right, there is um, good detail on these tracks. There is one or two areas where, you know, we've got this sort of like a little um, a sink mark or something. There's one or two... There's another one, every so many. We've got to sort of fill or sand this. Uh, I won't advise filling because it is more rubber than plastic. But, you know, could sand them out. Or then again, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, come to the weathering stage, whack a bit of mud, and, you know, job's done. Um, and they come together, you know, quite well as well, just there. Um, moving along, decals. Now, the decals, um, these are... Uh, looking rather good as well although there isn't the, um, that many uh, you do have markings for I do believe is Canada the British the US um, so you know because this tank did get sort of shared around the alloys and just to bring you to the instructions now all right, we do get a nice description, um, which really does give you some good history some good background on um, the tank itself and then if we just start it, I mean, this is the instructions. You know, it is a typical instruction of starting with your road wheels, you know, putting all your bits and um, tools and uh, bag, uh, boxes and everything all over the, the top of the hull. Um, then we move on to the turret, which then goes on to the, uh, the tank, and it just comes together really quick and easy. You know, that is, you know, pretty, you know, as I say, you know, it's going to be a really cool easy kit to be able to build and then you've got four sets of markings here two of us you've got a british one and you've got a canadian one as well so you've got a nice bit of variety there to um, you know pick which one you want to build um, so those are the instructions and those are all the pieces now um, all in all you know this is a kit which if you want i, I do personally like to go off and have those really cool quick easy builds where you know you could get you could probably build it in a weekend or something building in a week um and you know it's it's good fun it's cheap as well i mean 11 pound 50 you know isn't that much at all and it's not a mega small tank but i mean you know it's 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 a decent size so yeah i would definitely recommend this kit for a well detailed low price easy kit to put together um, so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed that so until next time my name is bob waldron this is genesis models and I hope you've enjoyed. So there's the uh, little US light tank there. Um, this is a tank that I really wouldn't mind um, doing a quick video build of just blowing it up um, I think I did mention it I wanted to show you you know everything like rust smoke dirt damage battle damage just kind of blow the whole thing up and um, you know might just do sort of like a couple of episodes just doing the weathering because um, it's a nice little easy kit um, also this week I've had um, some of my usual books get delivered um, one of them a nice big one here which is a really good buy if you um if you're interested in like all the kind of weathering stuff, Ammo, Mika Menez, you know, he's releasing this sort of encyclopedia uh, type thing where it kind of, you know, you read through this book and it shows you all the different techniques. Now, um, was it issue one as came out and that um, was like cockpits. This is all sort of um, interiors and assembly. So it really just go into a lot of detail on um, scratch building, wheel wells, um you know all those kind of things and it really is a pretty you know pretty hefty book here i mean how many pages we've got a good you know 158 pages here of you know pure 
learning modeling good color good um, printouts good color good um, quality paper um, really good read there um, and my favorite i always love um, getting these which is the weather magazine um, that's come out it does come out every two months um, so it is a bit of a wait but when you do get it i like these magazines because um you know um, you've probably bought the airfix or maybe the tammy magazine i like them but you know you just kind of flick through and that's about it um but with these the uh, the weather magazine i do like it because they actually teach you stuff in these um and it's a bit more advanced um and i do like that it's a it's a magazine you can keep and you can look back at and you know oh that's how i did that technique or whatever um you know so uh, those are a couple of magazines that are out um, just if you want to go have a look and buy now next up i know this is a bit of a um, bland topic and um and whatnot but it's one of these uh, videos that i thought you know what i've got to make it because you know it's our health at the end of the day so um here's a nice little tutorial about extractor fans and face masks Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bobby Waldron and in this video we're going to be touching on the subject of um, extractor fans and respirators, um, which I know it's a bit of a dry subject, but it is a subject that needs to be addressed really. Um, so the whole reason for extractor fans and um, having things like these face masks is basically in modeling there's all sorts of chemicals and everything that we uh, mess around with that we can breathe in and basically can seriously sort of like damage our lungs and everything um, and these types of chemicals I mean you know at the top of the list everybody knows it you get an airbrush and you start spraying paint and the overspray basically goes up in the air and you breathe it in breathing into your lungs um, which we have things like we've got the enamel paints and cellulose paints those two types of paints are they are very actually quite potent really and you really don't want to be breathing them things in which is why um, acrylics have probably got so popular they do dry quicker um, and they're not as harmful as enamels and lacquers um, and in saying that, I don't want you to take that as, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine, you can breathe it in. You know, they're still harmful. They're just not as harmful as enamel, enamels and, and lacquers. You still want to be, you know, doing extractor fans and, and your respirators and stuff. Um, but then there are other sides to modeling where you still need to have this stuff on and wear this um, stuff as well. Um, we've got all sorts of things. A um, few examples I've got here. Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Um, I mean, admittedly, you're not spraying this, but I mean, if you open this up and give it a sniff, it is mega, mega potent, probably more potent than anything else um, that's on here. This stuff is pretty damn, well, yeah, pretty damn dangerous. I mean, I know when I first brought um, this and first used it, um, you know, it does give you headaches and it does make you feel a bit high and a bit drowsy and everything. Um, you know, so you, even when you're using this stuff, it's probably not a bad idea to put your face mask on or have a door, at least have a door open, get some sort of ventilation in the room or an extractor fan on in the background or something like that, because it is, that is still quite potent. Um, and, you know, you've also got CA glue, super glue. Um, that's also can be a bit potent, more so when I do kind of teach sometimes um, you get a lighter and you can sort of, um, on a glue applicator, if you light it, it burns off um, the CA glue. Um, I did read somewhere that what it burns off is, it can be like dang, really dangerous chemicals. I forgot what it was. I think it might have been arsenic or something like that. Um, but what it was, whatever it burns off is quite... Um, you know quite potent so you don't really want to be 
you know, burning lots of this stuff off in a, you know, a non-ventilated room with eight year respirators and all that kind of stuff. Um, there are other things. I mean, we've got cellulose thinners here. We use this um, for all sorts of things, uh, from thinning stuff, uh, techniques and stuff. This is pretty potent as well and, and highly flammable um, also. Um, and then just off the top of my head, I mean, we've got the Mr. Surfacer stuff, some of the fillers and the putties. I mean, they've got, you know, some nasty chemicals in there. Uh, admittedly, it's not going to get in the air as much as spraying and stuff. But the whole idea is you still want to have some sort of ventilation, you know, whether you have your door, your windows open, extractor fan on in the background. Um, I know people hate wearing these. I hate wearing them. Um, but you definitely want to be wearing them for the more potent stuff. Um, you know, I, I just mentioned the Mr. Surface. So just painting that on. I mean, it's not giving off that much in fume wise so you're probably not going to need to put a respirator on um, but yeah you know definitely with the the spraying um, and all those kind of things as well um, the other things as well where you want to be um, wearing a respirator as well which by the way this is um, an m3 respirator i do actually like this one and um, you can go to pretty much any online store and they've got something like this especially like um um, the proper spray online stores like um, everythingairbrush.com, um, those kind of places. They're really cool. We can change the filters. They just literally pop on and off, um, and it just give you a good seal all around your mouth and your nose because it's got this sort of like it's sort of like rubbery, so it really gives you a good seal. Um, and they're not too bad to breathe through. And we've got all sorts of different straps to adjust it and everything. So, um, you know, that's a good respirator. I think it was around about 20, 30 pounds. You can get cheaper ones for probably under 10 pounds. Um, you know, something's better than nothing. But, you know, it is a good idea to buy at least a decent respirator, if anything. Because, I mean, you know, compared to, say, our um, extractor fan here, this costs around um, over 200 pounds to buy but this really does suck out the air out of the room really really well um, very very a good product to get if you can fork out the extra money um, I do believe this is from oh what is it um, aircraft um, aircraft.net or something uh, I forgot where it was but um, you know if you do a search for um, what's the model number it is a 300 SD this is the one I've got I do believe they've updated that now to a BV 300 SD they've just changed the first two letters um, from being an A to a BV um, same sort of model and everything same sort of price just um, it's slightly been updated it's more um, rectangular more box shaped and it's got a bit of a, a curve at the back there um, but yeah they work really well these do um, and getting back to um, other things that people don't seem to sometimes kind of forget and that's doing stuff like sanding as well I mean we could you could be sanding plastic um, sanding like the green putty or any kind of filler you've been sanding off um, been doing the HMS victory build as well I mean sanding off the wood you know you sand that off and it goes up into the air and you breathe it in um, you know it's sort of just the same thing it's going to damage your lungs so you want to have extractor fans on uh, face masks on there as well uh, when it does come to sanding if you do do a wet sand um, the wet sand does catch and hold loads most of actually uh, the sanding dust that you, you're sanding because the the actual water catches it all and you end up with just like a, a load of mushy um, sanding dust which does help as well um, but if you don't do wet sand it's going to go up in the air um, which then brings us on to resin I mean when you're cutting sawing sanding resin um, you know same thing the dust comes up in the air and you breathe it in and resin is um, an even more dangerous um, type of chemical that you don't want to be getting in your lungs or breathing it in it is probably you know it's up there as being one of the most dangerous things you know you've got your dangerous cellulose thinners tamir extra thin cement um, lack of paints enamel paints resin those are the things up there that you really want to you know make sure you've got all protected with um, also um, just to kind of tell you what kind of setup I have I have these two 
uh, extractor fans that are actually in the loft and they are just like um, really on full blast all the time and I've soundproofed it so you know you can't really hear it which is great and those are you know on pretty much all the time um, for me personally if you could do something like that I mean these extractor fans there they're actually not that expensive i mean the one i brought was uh, oh, i forgot around about 60 or 70 pounds i paid for that um and it is actually more powerful than the one that's in here it's just you've got to go off install it into the roof and get the the ducting system going on there um you know and wiring it all into like the proper um proper wiring it in with a switch and everything like you would with a light switch type of thing um so yeah, I mean, cheaper, um, but you've got to go about it um, a bit differently. You might have to get an electrician um, or, or something like that. But those two really do help with extracting stuff out the room. And then with this extractor fan on as well, that helps as well as um, the face masks that I use. Now, when actually spraying, you don't want your extractor fan over the other side of the room. Um, you want to literally be where you're spraying, where you're pointing at is actually pointing at the extractor fan. So we've got our model here, we're spraying with our airbrush. So when our spray hits the model, we're spraying our model, but the overspray goes this way towards the extractor fan. So then it sucks it out straight away before it can get up and in the air um, and, and all those kind of things. Um, so yeah, I, I know it's a bit of a, um, a, a dry subject, a bit boring, um, but for you guys who are new to the hobby, you need to know that these chemicals that I'm teaching you to use, um, you know, I'm basically saying go out and buy them because, you know, that's what you sort of need for different techniques and different parts of the build. You know, you need to know the dangers that come with it and then also what to buy. Uh, now I know these extractor fans are expensive you can buy cheaper ones um, this is probably you know one of the best on the market um, you can pick them up for like 70 pounds but if you know money's a bit tight the one thing that is an absolute definite is get a face mask because um, at the end of the day these extractor fans extract um, all the chemicals out of the room you know if you've got this face face mask on in your room all the time you're going to be absolutely fine it's just that when you take off the gas uh, the face gas mask take off the face mask you know the the pollutant is still in the air and you're still going to be breathing in although you might have stopped spraying you know it's still floating around um you know so at least if you get a face mask you're at least protecting your lungs uh, and then you can open the door and let the place ventilate. I mean, you could probably just go outside and leave the room for like half an hour or an hour just to let everything settle and flow out of the door or the window. And then you can come back in and carry on working. Um, but that's if you've just started and you haven't really kind of condoned the money to go off and say, get, you know, extractor fans or you put one um, extractor fans in the roof or something like that so um yeah hopefully this video has been a beneficial to you um you know and hopefully you're going to be thinking more you know protect your lungs you've got to you've got to really sort of think about that because it's um it really is you know you don't want this hobby um to ruin your life basically because i um, you could get all sorts of lung problems cancer especially people who um, suffer from asthma, asthma as well you know you're going to have problems um spraying and using these kind of chemicals so um yeah hopefully that's all been helpful and beneficial to you um here at genesis models so until next time my name is bobby waldron um this is genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed so there you go there is a um, nice tutorial there a bit about health and safety really i know it's a bland subject but hopefully you've taken note of it and it's there for everyone to see and that'll be going free on youtube you know because it is a, a subject that needs to be addressed um next up questions and answers a couple of question answers we've got um albert 83 um he's asking Will I join in on this new group build, our um, aircraft, um, our carrier-based aircraft? I would love to, to be honest with you. Um, if I was to join the group build, I would build, uh, I would build actually this month's competition, which is um, the Vietnam scooter. It's, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing an F4 Phantom, but 
this is smaller it's a bit easier to go together a bit quicker um you know and with the little extras from medard it does make for a good good build um if i was to do it um to be honest with you i couldn't do it as a video i mean it would be my own personal time in the background maybe a weekend or something and i'd just sort of take photos at the end of the day throw them up on the forum just like you guys do um in the group build um you know it would be nice to video it but you know building and videoing just kind of like quadruples the amount of time it takes you to um, build the model so um, yeah if i was to it would just be photos and for the pure fun and love of the hobby um next up mike now mike um, has been asking a couple of questions about um glass now there was a load of information on the forum about um varnishes and stuff oh yeah you know there's quite a lot of um quite a lot of detailed posts actually about um clear pledge multi-surface wax cleaner it goes under loads of different names um but it's basically the same product and to be honest with you i mean because i was basically brought up on this um you know this is what i use this is what i've just got used to and it's just you know you know you, you you use something for so many years and you just end up constantly using it um but as the um post uh, as people started posting and answering his questions um did come to aqua gloss now this is alclad 2's um aqua gloss this stuff in here um as a recommendation is i would say a definite recommendation and the reason is i have tested this in the past and it is literally the same as our clear uh, multi-surface wax floor cleaner um you know there's not really much difference in it at all um in, in some ways it potentially is better because i mean you probably haven't got stuff like i mean with the floor cleaner i mean they'll probably put a bit of essence in there to make it smell nice and stuff um this is potentially a bit more pure but i'm just guessing to be honest with you, they just seem actually um the same but if you want to actually buy a pacific the formulated for modeling varnish you know this is the one to get the aqua gloss um, so definitely a recommended product um, for you there mike um, right next week is i mean i'm going to be announcing the competition winner august is competition winner um, and you know sadly because um you know i was late announcing this with problems last week and holidays and stuff um you know it's going to be early so you haven't had much time to actually get involved but you know the week after that we'll have the next um competition prize there also you know again you know f15 is i'm doing it for two weeks um this time so i can sort of you know get cracking into it rather than just i've got a week um and then i've got to start starting of one i can i've really sort of got into it and i can roll into next week um, and get the spraying going so um yeah hopefully you'll be around for next week and we'll have inbox reviews and all sorts as well uh, remember questions and answers if you've got any questions you want me to answer in the show get over to the genesis models forum where um, all you gotta do is post in the questions and answers section on the forum and i'll do my best to answer them so until next time my name is bobby waldron this is genesis models and i hope you've enjoyed